You can turn in your King James Bible to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 7. Um, I've been seeing this thing, and it really disturbs me. I, these people, and they say, I, I talk about precious metals or whatever else, and I say, you know, that gold and silver is the system of money in here. God created gold and silver um, as money, as currency. That's what he designed. And man, in his sin, they look and they say, well, there's only so much gold and, and silver, so that would control the price of things. Hmm. If we would print paper, if we come up with our other forms of currency, then we can get wealthier than what God designed for man to do. And so um, I realize that the gold and silver market is manipulated. I get it. I understand that. I realize that there's no sure thing down here on this earth that the Bible says that as well, that you're not to lay up treasures for yourself in, on earth where thieves can break through and steal. In other words, the government. <laughs> um, I get it. But having precious metals is a better thing, in my opinion, than hoarding cash or especially putting it into the banks with all the stuff that they can do to your money, bail in and whatever, and take it and things. So I believe in precious metals. I do. You can't have everything in precious metals. I get it. You have to have a bank account if you're doing any kind of business or driving or whatever else, checking, you know, if you have electricity that you need to have on and whatever else, well, you have to pay. You can't go in and pay your bill with gold or silver coins. I get it. I understand. But for wealth preservation, precious metals is a good idea. But I, whenever I say this type of thing, I see people and they say, you know, we're going to be, people will be casting their silver out into the streets. It's going to be useless. It's, it'll be worthless. So, you know, you're, you're crazy to have precious metals because people will cast it out into the streets. This is called not rightly dividing the word of truth is what this whole thing is. I'm going to debunk that whole thing in this little study here. Not a real big detailed study because it doesn't need to be a real big detailed study. I'm going to show you why this doesn't work. Um, not one verse in the entire Pauline epistles tells you that you shouldn't have gold and silver because it'll be cast out. You'll be casting it out into the streets or something. Okay, so you have to rightly divide here. Paul is the apostle that is to go and bring the uh, you know, gospel, but also um, the instructions for Christians living today. All right, we don't have to go back to the Old Testament and sacrifice animals. So, yeah, I get that. Well, then why would you go back to the Old Testament to get doctrine for today? See, it doesn't work. But let's read here. Ezekiel 7, chapter 7, verse 16 through 22. But they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. Why is the wrath coming upon Christians? We're not appointed to wrath. Study your Bible. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he said it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them, and I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to make the wicked, and, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into it and defile it. Okay, what is it talking about? It's talking about a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, in the day of the wrath of the Lord. It's, we're not appointed to wrath. First Thessalonians chapter 5 talks about that. All right. So to try to take this and make it into something about the time is coming when you'll cast your silver and gold out into the streets. Well, if you're lost and going into the time of Jacob's trouble, then yeah, that's true. But if you're a Christian, that's not going to be happening. Don't take it out of context. And I'll show you the the thing here, James chapter 1, I'll show you how it all lines up to show you that this is a future event, not for the body of Christ. James chapter 1, verse 1 in the New Testament. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. The twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. They're scattered, but God's going to bring them back. 
Who's it talking to? To the Jews, not to Christians. The book of James is not written directly, doctrinally, to a Christian. Well, then we can ignore it. No, you don't ignore it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Paraphrasing slightly there, but the whole point is, the whole Bible is, is there for you to learn. The things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. All right? It's all there. You study the whole thing, apply different things. But doctrinally, you have to be very careful. As I said, there's no nobody was walking around right now saying, doctrinally, I need to be a Levitical priest and I need to have the covering on and I have to have the different gemstones on my chest and I have to go in and before the Holy of Holies and sacrifice, you know, a, a lamb without blemish and whatever else. And, and, and then later on, I have to go and I have to make sure that I get the blood of the lamb and I put it on my doorposts and, you know, and, and things so that the death angel doesn't kill my firstborn son. No, you, you don't do that. But then they'll go and they'll take other things. See, it doesn't make any sense. Um, James chapter, or James, the book of James is written to Jews. Let's go to chapter 5 in the book of James. And I'll show you this thing about the precious metals in the future for them. James chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Um, Jews right now that reject Jesus Christ are trying to bring in a Jewish utopia. And I, it pains me to have to say this. Because as a New Testament Christian, I have a love for Jewish people. I have a love for the nation of Israel. It's just there. You see with the Apostle Paul, he said, you know, the, I think the most amazing statement from a Christian ever made is the Apostle Paul when he says, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. All right. He's saying, I would go to hell and burn if it meant the salvation of my people in Israel. Now, that's a statement of love that you have for people that are your enemy, all right? The nation of Israel. Paul's saying, I'm a Jew, and I would go to hell if it meant my brethren being saved. Okay, that's a pretty <laughs> pretty strong statement. Of course, he can't go to hell because he's born again and, you know, whatever, sealed until the day of redemption. But the whole point here is this portion of Scripture, James, the book of James, is written to a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. They are the ones, the Jews, like I said, I, I hate to have to say this, but the Jews are into the whole finance thing. They are satanically corrupt. Not all of them. Not all of them. You can't just say Jews are all evil. No, that, that's not true. There are some Jews that have not mingled. There are some Jews that are, you know, truly looking for answers and whatever else. And they're just like in the, you know, the Gospels when Jesus is walking around, the, the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees, they have the people under their control, you know, because see, with organized religion, you have your synagogue system, your official church, like the Roman Catholic system, and that's where you get your, you know, you're born there, you get, you're raised there, you get your teaching from there, your confirmation, you know, and then you get married there, and then you become a faithful church member, and you eventually get your burial there, and you get your insurance from there, and you get your job from there, and your whole life revolves around your organized religion. But the problem is, when you, so when you get kicked out of something like that, you're basically shoved out into the world. You're blackballed, essentially, if you want to get Masonic about it. And you're put out there into the world, and it's just kind of, now what do I do? And you go to back to your family, and your family says, we don't want anything to do with you. Get out of here. I have no son. Get away from me. So that's why there's such strong control in those systems of Roman Catholicism and Judaism. But the corruption that they do, the horrible things that these people do to get ahead, because, see, you have no choice. That's the reason why the Jews do so many evil things, because they rejected Jesus Christ. They don't have God on their side. There's no pl blessing and things from God coming anymore. So they have to fake it. That's why they tr heap treasure together for the last days. The gold and the silver... It's not the same as a Christian. A Christian says, hey, I want to have some precious metals here so I don't have a lot of money in the bank because you put money in the bank. The bank says, oh, we're going to just lend this out to whoever. You know, so some pervert comes along and says, I want to dress like a whatever and go read storybooks to children. I want to have some kind of a loan to be able to do this and 
get my surgery and whatever else, they can come to your bank and they can lend out your money to the pervert to get their surgery. So you say, as a Christian, I'm going to take some of my money and I'm going to put it into the system of, of money that's in Scripture, gold and silver. Okay, that's a smart thing to do. And right now, if you haven't noticed, the precious metals prices are going up, way up. Gold was, you know, has been hitting all-time record highs. You know, every couple of days it hits a new high. It's up to you know 2,300 something or whatever else right now. Um, as I'm doing this study, late April 2024, a lot of the experts are saying, and even banks are saying, it's probably going to hit 3,000, maybe 4,000 dollars this year, an ounce. Wow, it's really increasing in value. Actually, that's the scary thing. Gold is not increasing in value. The dollar is crashing. The dollar is decreasing in value. That's why gold is looking better. And silver, many are saying $30 for silver an ounce. Still very affordable, but, you know, you do what you want with your money. But um, uh, to say, oh, well, the time's coming, you know, when people be throwing it out on the streets. Watch out for that. You know, don't get into precious metals because you'll throw it out into the streets. Someday it'll be useless. It'll be worthless. Well, that only works if you're a Jew or if you're going to be there in the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation 18. I'll show you when the uh, precious metals become useless. Comparing Scripture with Scripture. Revelation chapter 18, beginning in verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, thy great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth, the Jews, they are the merchants, identified in Scripture, shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver hmm and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thyan wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men interesting because if you get a mortgage you have a mortgage backed security you are the mortgager. Your name's on it. It's a promissory note. You're saying, they're saying, we're going to give you 500000 for this house, and you're writing your name saying, and I promise to sell or to pay this off at, you know, basically three times what the original borrowing thing was, um, depending on the interest rates and, and things. Okay? It's, you're basically the souls of men. They're, you're selling your soul for that mortgage, for that loan. Many people aren't even aware of that. But you can check it out. Uh, look at the history of the merchants when they came here to America. The Jewish merchants. They would go around, they were called peddlers. And they would have a backpack or some way that they could, you know, maybe a mule or something if they had a little bit more money. And they'd come around and they'd try to peddle products and sell things. And, um, and then they started to get a little bit more money. They could afford stores where they would sell merchandise. And then they started to uh, loan money to people. And started to charge usury. And there were laws and things uh, against usury. And they would overthrow certain things and whatever else. It's, a, it's an amazing story what the Jews have done to get to this point where God's wrath is coming upon them. The time of Jacob's trouble. Very amazing. Um, verse 14. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships by in the, in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Okay, let me just stop there for a minute. 
Interesting, because when the Lord is rebuking the Pharisees, Matthew chapter 23, he says, Ye compass land and sea to make one proselyte. Huh. Um, you study the whole thing of modern day finance and whatever else, it's very much connected to the merchant marine type of things in the nautical system. Uh, liquidation of cash and things, you know, liquidate, like liquid. Um, you know, I mean, there's so many things we can get into. I'm not going to get into all that stuff there. Very interesting study, though. Um, verse 20, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of the candle shall light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee for thy merchants were the great men of the earth for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived hooray for hollywood what's hollywood a uh, type of wood that's sacred in witchcraft hmm oak and holly primarily kind of weird and uh, they cast spells on you. This is my favorite program on television. You can study the whole thing. I mean, it's amazing. It blows your mind when you realize how much we've been lied to. And you realize that the Jews are behind it. Sad. I, again, it breaks my heart. I don't, I don't find any kind of joy in that and say, oh, it's Jews, all oh, the Jews. It's sad to me. But it's what the scriptures said, what, said would happen. Verse 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Roman Catholicism joining with the Jews to kill and to spread that wine of the fornication out there to make all the nations drunk. And what is that wine? Artificial money. That's what it is. Um, get people drunk on it. They go out there and they party. It's plenty of money, man. Who cares? It's only money. You only live once. You know what I mean? You're drunk. They that be drunk are drunken in the night. We can keep going here, but <laughs> we're going to stop for now. Still another study to do, but um, what a book. <laughs> Old uh, Brian, I really appreciate what you're doing, but that book is just a man-made book. It's filled with errors. <laughs> uh, no. no, you can get away with that if you get talk to a novice Christian. But I've been around for a long time. You're not telling me that this book is made by man. No way. No way. This book right here is made by man. That's my book. All right. There's some interesting stuff, you know, that ties in with this chapter, ties to that chapter. But compared to this book, the book of books, not anywhere even in the ballpark. <laughs> okay. Uh, every book made by man pales in comparison to this book right here this king james bible all the satanic vatican versions and everything else no they don't have the tie-ins they don't have all the things this book is this book you open the pages of this you want to see a, a eternity open the pages and compare scripture with scripture and you'll see that there's no end to it check me out study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You start to realize the tie-ins go, just, it's endless. This one goes over to here. It reminds me of that verse over there. And I do a word study and this verse is there. And that one, this one goes over to here. And that one, it's just, it, it's amazing, this book. If you don't have a King James Bible, you are missing out. Um, and if you hate the King James Bible, you're lost. <laughs> I can tell you that. I don't even have to think or maybe I should talk to you in person first. You hate this book? You hate this book, you're lost and on your way to hell. And your damnation is just. All right. This is God's book. All the others are satanic counterfeits based on a 19th century forgery. Uh, we're going to be bringing out some big stuff on that in the future. So, won't give any more of that away right now. But I'm going to be dropping some big bombshells on that whole thing. And, um, yeah. So, all right. That will be it for this study. Really excited about these two studies. And this next one will be a good one, too. See you in that video. Thank you for watching.